Ryan and I have been fuck I don't know how long since like 2000 I met you in 2016 uh, 16 is what I was going to say too yeah so eight years we've known each other and been you know occupying the same space but also close friends like if I need if I have questions about shit I always call him if same with him he always calls me and we talk about you know he just different aspects and kind of different uh, approaches to the market that we both take we kind of stopped doing traditional market shit in like 2018, but I still draw heavily from that uh, culture and that side of the industry. So if I have questions about that, you know, I call Ryan, talk to him about stuff. And um, the opposite is true for him. He calls me and asks about rec market shit all the time. So it's a really good friendship. Thank you for being here. Uh, this is dope. Sacramento fucking, you know, we, this is really it. This there's two brands. There's a bunch of sick brands in Sacramento, but there's really two that have come out uh, and, and crushed and kind of took it over. And, and those two are up here. So thanks for coming, everyone. Uh, if you don't know, my name is Ted Lighty. I'm the founder of Alien Labs. This is Ryan, uh, the founder of fucking mega brand Doja Pack. Thank you. We're going to talk about our upbringings you know, the state of the industry and we'll answer questions from the audience. And I got like 12 questions from the internet, tons of good questions from the internet today, but I had to pick 12 that were my favorite. So the first half will be about 30 minutes, and then we'll do 15 minutes for those internet questions. And then I'll do 15 minutes to open up uh, to the audience. Um, so yeah, thanks for coming and listening. I hope you learned something that you can pass on to your friends and more importantly, your customers, because that's really what this is for, you know, um, Sacramento is a little bit different than I think some of the audiences that we're going to do this for. Sacramento is one of the first counties and cities to offer uh, rec market licenses, but the weed culture has also always been here. So some of this stuff, you know, you're probably going to know um, some of it you might not. But overall, we're just kind of here to help you guys um, sell fucking more weed and, and be more educated on it in general. So um Ryan got you got your start in the industry right here in Sac, right? Yeah, I started here in Sacramento with as a delivery service model. So we were retail, non storefront. Weed uh, maps? Weed maps. We had weed maps ads, we had uh SAC News and Review. I did um you know Bud Bud Trader. Bud Trader, holy <laughs> shit. One of my boys got shot off Bud Trader. Yeah. I was, uh, you know, I was pretty big I was pretty big. I was pretty gorilla too. You know, I used to go give out a lot of stuff and go to like that's how I know, you know, we just recently did uh, pop-ups at Exhale. In, oh, yeah, fuck with, shout know, out to our, Exhale. Our, and they're like the, the original. now, obviously, but um, yeah. due to economical reasons. But my boy Ryan, um, you know, he, uh, he, I met him just via doing those, like, pulling up to smoke shops back in the day and stuff. Yeah. I used Buying to pull up to it. smoke shops, try to leave, like, brochures in there and shit. So, you know, so. it, was, it was a lucrative market, Sacramento delivery service, I feel like. That was a, it was, it was a very, like a lot of people got started on that, you know, shout oh, out to guys sure. that are still, That's, you know, um, still at, doing uh, it. Yeah. Shook and, you know, delivery services are sick. I actually used one recently and it was a bummer. So I think rec market deliveries might not be that good, but I placed an order because I was out of gummies. I use CBN gummies every night. They fucking knock you out. Dude. They're great for sleeping. <laughs> um, and I placed an order cause I was out. Usually I just go to the fruit ridge store and buy a bunch of stuff, but, and they came to deliver it, which I had to submit like my ID and my picture of myself with my ID and a bunch of different shit. And I left and my little sister was babysitting my kids and they and she's like 27 and they wouldn't give it to her. And I was just like, what the fuck? But it's fine. Um, I canceled it. They are like, hey, do you want to redo this? I'm like, no, I needed it right then. Um, so yeah, I already kind of went over this a little bit, but I chose Ryan to be my first guest because I love his brand. I love what he does. I love, um, you know, he was really a, a pioneer in the in the really high quality connoisseur space. I would say like you and uh, Tenko both kind of pushed the quality up a lot, they, like to where customers can expect a whole new level of quality. And that kind of set the standard for, for a lot of us and what we needed to do to kind of compete with on that level. Um, we, I used to live on 29th and O. That's when I first moved to Sacramento before I had kids. I, I lived at 29th and O. And uh, he would come over and we'd just sit in my office and fucking talk about, you know, we'd fucking 
sell each other weed and, and let each other try shit. And then we would just talk about what we were going to do. And I, I don't know. Do you, do you ever think that this is where we would end up? Is just. I, I knew it was going somewhere at that point. I knew it was going somewhere. Yeah. Alien was. I mean, you, you were already, side. just to be transparent, you were, you were way ahead of me. So when I heard about Alien Labs, I, ha- I didn't have an identity or a brand. I was just going to North Star on C. Yeah, that was um, our first. And that then, and uh, Collective. I, I went in ones. and it, I think it was like, I think it was Becca was like, yeah, check out this fucking lemon oh fuel. God. She was like, oh, if you like, you like OG, Becca. try out, try this yeah. lemon fuel. Vicky. And, Vicky too. Um, yeah, yeah. Vicky had weed in there, obviously, too. North Country. But the lemon farms. fuel is the best thing in there. But yeah, they gave me the lemon fuel, and I started doing my my research, and I started following you on Instagram, and you know, so you you were you were honestly like when we started our brand, it was like one of the inspirations for us was Alien Labs for sure. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, it was interesting how we've all kind of. Now I'm inspired by you all the time. You know, it, it now it's become a thing where we all kind of, you know, inspire each other, not only with how we do things, but also just like the quality. Like I know Sacramento has a ton of great cultivators more than anywhere on earth. You guys are very lucky to live here. You really are. Um, all the best brands come from here in my view. And most of the most of the best cultivators, we, you know, we're all friends and we all talk about shit, but we also all push each other to be better. I know like if someone, one of my boys comes over with a sick ass batch and I'm like, fuck the shit, my shit ain't this good. Um, I go the next day and I'm like, hey, what the fuck, make this shit better. You know what else I was just gonna say? That's true, is, um, you know, out here there's a good flow too. Like there's enough people that smoke good weed in this area and there's not a, a, whole, a whole like, whole like over concentration of stores out here that carry this stuff so i feel like they sell through pretty good so when i go to like pull up to say connected i'm always getting fresh weed out here you know it's it's some of the rec stores in other regions can be kind of like you know discouraging because you pull up and you might get a batch that's eight weeks from the packaging date but it's cool to like pull up main stage in these places and be able to get like you know, connected, be able to get like fresh batches. You know, I that's, agree. That's, that's what the reg market is supposed to be. It's supposed to sell through fast so that we can always be enjoying new fresh batches. We put out batches. I mean, I know you do 10 times as many batches as me, but we put out batches weekly. So it's like, I'm, I'm trying to, so I'm trying to have people moving through. This is produce, you know, so it's all. Yeah, that's, fresh what, that's right. We, tr- there's a lot of great stores here. And I think that is something that a lot of people know. I think those stores are just ran by people the that really understand. The market supports the stores here is what I'm saying. You know, the market yeah, supports the for stores. Sure. And there's really is like out of everywhere I've been, I feel like Sa- if you had to ask me off record, like where's the best weed, best city for weed in the world is Sacramento. 100%. I completely agree. It's something that we try to do um, really with our brand, but especially at the connected store. And I know main stage and those stores are ran by people that understand this differently than I think a lot of the stores in like LA or the Bay Area. Um, There's definitely some stores in the Bay Area, shout out to Lemonade out in Antioch. They always, what it comes down to is that a lot of stores over order. So they'll be like, yeah, I want two pounds of everything, but their store sell through can't support that. Even if every single customer that came in in one day bought that Alien Labs or, or Connected or Doja, you st- they don't have as many customers as it takes to get through that weed quickly. So it's on not only the sales team, which, you know, they do a great job of saying, hey, you know, you should order a half case or whatever, because then we can just get you next week and everything can always be fresh. But when the store is knowledgeable about cannabis, it makes a f- hell of a difference for how people can get uh, fresh weed, you know. So uh, what drew you to the cannabis industry in general? Well, I mean, I, I started smoking weed when I was like in eighth grade, and then I was like, you know, it was kind of expensive, so I was like, I need to. Yeah, I gotta figure out how to do so this. So it, it all started just kind of like smoking for free. It wasn't really like, at first, it wasn't really like, hey, I'm gonna make money off this. And then when it did start making money off this, I was like, cool, we're making a little money off this, but it wasn't like, you know, I think when it really started kicking off out here was in like 2007. I was, you know, I was, I was probably in, in 2007, I was already pretty deep into selling weed. And then I started, you know, it's when like a lot of the dispensaries started opening. I was down SoCal at the time. So a lot of dispensaries just in California period, I think 07 was when a lot of them, like there was like 1500 dispensaries in Sac. Yeah, That's back when Sac County, I, I, I wasn't here for that era, but I hear about the times when there was like dispensaries in like Fair Oaks and shit, oh, you know, yeah. like everywhere. everywhere, everywhere out here had dispensaries and it was the same in LA as well. Like, you know, like the Valley everywhere, there was like 
thousands of dispensaries, OC, yep. same thing. So, you know, I thought at that point it was like, this shit could be serious. I can actually make money off this. You know what I mean? So, yeah. And then, you know, seeing people like you, I was like, damn, that really shit. That's, you know, people like you, I, I would say, honestly, you and Burner are probably some of my top people that originally inspired me too. You know, Ivan from Jungle Boys yeah. as well. Con Caleb, obviously, big homie. Caleb, shout out but to But at the time, Caleb. we didn't know who Caleb was. He wasn't public yet about yeah. who he was. You had to be like, in the, you really had to be behind the, in the know to know who Caleb was, you yeah. know? But like that, 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 it's like seeing all you guys do it. I was like, man, there's, there is a possibility. Like, and I hope people think that about us. You know, I, I hope people see me and be like, okay, he can do it, then we can do it, you know? That's Just one consistency of the and good business this. practices, you know, making good decisions. Yeah, I love that about this. It's just to inspire others to be able to do whatever they want to do. I think we both came from uh, humble beginnings. I was fucking poor when I was a kid. Um, and just putting my mind to this and, and doing it really proves, like really proves. People can say this, but you guys know me. You've met me. Um, you really can do shit if you just do it and put your mind to it. So, uh, Did you have any other options? Well, I mean, I went to culinary school, so I used to work in kitchens, you know, so I, I, I do know how to cook professionally. Um, so, I mean, I, and I used to valet cars, you know. Yeah. So I know how to drive and I know how to cook, you know, basic you shit. You do. You're a great cook. If you, you guys know I mean? don't know, he is. He whips but it up. I, I, as far as other options, it was never like in my head. It was never really an option. I only went to culinary school because I was on probation at the time for a weed charge. And then my PO was like, you either got to get a job or go to school. And I was like, I'm just going to go to school. That was smart. Yeah. Culinary school sounds sick. It was lit. What are some of your favorite strains? Well, well, Ted, I like Gelinade G41. Um, I really, so Gelinade and Gelato 41, these are yeah. two that you guys are really Shout legendary. Shout out to Connected for course. making those, you We know, can call it, we could say popular. Gushers, you know, we could say Gushers. Yeah, so Gushers and so Gelinade. Gelinade, Gushers. Um, I really like the, uh, the you know, the uh, Sherbanger 22 is one of my favorites. That's really good. It's and hard it's to like, grow. You know, I feel like people sleep on that one, but I see a lot of batches that go 79 days, like my boy down south is taking them full term. And even Dave's batches, though, like he's got his little dry back program and he's taking he's only taking them 63 days, but they finish like where they're good. Yeah, those are good. And he so does those really are really good. fire. So I smoke a lot of Sherbanger. Um, you know, the, the Z is cool, but I'm not really, I, I'm, I'm not somebody who, that's not my favorite. It's not even in my top five. Um, right now, another one just off rip that I like because I like OGs like Lemon Fuel. Yeah, I love Let's just OGs. say Lemon Fuel. But another one that I'm excited about right now is one that we that Dave's working with, and it's a it's from JBZ, and it's a it's a HPK like Hollywood Pure Kush mm. uh, that was pollinated by like a brother of Perm. Oh, nice male. So male pollen, brother of Perm, Fire. Hollywood per, Pure Kush. We did a Legend OG Pure uh, Permanent Marker that I just saw like. It was interesting because we did it both ways. So we had the permanent marker as the female and the permanent that's marker cool as the male. That's cool to see that. I, that's, you know, Fire Farmer did that with the Delish and the Fun Dip. So he, you know, reversed both strains and hit them both to each other. And then yeah. Fino hunted both of them. And it was kind of a mind fuck, but it's cool to see, like, people doing it both ways. Like yeah, that. for us, uh, the permanent marker as the male made it way more purple. And uh, the Legend OG as the male was super green, but it had less permanent marker characteristics so we're gonna keep doing that we're doing it right now with skittles and xeno and then xeno and skittles so yeah, just are you ever gonna out. cross the two phenol like you know you could yeah eventually for sure be crazy too because then it's like a crazy like generational ice in cross type shit yeah we've been doing it crazy now all the pheno it'll come down and it'll be like fucking two sentences long of the lineage i'm like shit we're getting deep in this shit um so big discussions right now in the industry is the Indica Sativa hybrid. There's no doubt to me that those are outdated terms, but customers still shop off them. So they come in, they say, hey, I want this, I want that. What do you think about that? I feel the exact same way that they're outdated terms. I think that everything, obviously, as most of us in this room probably know, is every. I think everything is a hybrid, you know, personally. Um, I think that we have hybrids that lean in different directions. I think that a lot of the time what people think are, uh, and I, you know, these are my, you know, there's no, the science, is, I'm, yeah, I'm not a scientist, you know no, what I mean? But sure, I'm saying yeah. like, at the end of the day, I think like some of the things that people, some of the characteristics that people might associate with certain like indica or sativa 
may not even be what it is because like some of the lemon lemon tree crosses grow real short and stocky and like you know they still have the lemon turp so it's like some people kind of associate certain turps with being like oh i don't really like lemon i don't like yeah, sativas sure. um and i smoke gelinate all day and i don't really feel like i'm smoking sativa all day but with that being said it does kind of give me a little uppityness yeah, so it's more if i was like a bud tender selling it to it to like when i'm at a pop-up and somebody's asking me you or like something that excuse me something that's like a daytime smoke then i'm gonna you know or something like hey i really like sativa is like i would probably put them on some shit like that but i think it's an outdated term but it's like for lack of a better one right that's now exactly you know how it's I like we it. we don't have we don't have the it's hard to bust down to somebody that doesn't really like understand that like people in this room you know this is the inner circle but if you like yeah. got layman's walking in and they're they're like you know explain to me if this is an indica or sativa sometimes it's easier just to be like this one this one that it's harder is an indica this one that you know yeah i think the terms are outdated but i think they've like have a certain changes. meaning that people understand that's it as, right you know like language people want, changes over if time. people are like yo i want a straight indica that means they want to get that shit that's like giving you that that's that right. dome buster you know that shit that gives you a real heavy high real lethargic that's what i think of when i'm thinking of those yeah things. right and that, you know and, and the thing is though that necessarily speaking like a lot of times shit shit varies phenotype to phenotype you know what i mean so that's what right. that's what a lot of these breeders tell me is that they have certain phenotypes of certain plants that might be you know this might be a more indica dominant phenotype. This other one might be a more sativa dominant phenotype. Like, I don't get too hung up on that. I just smoke what I like, you know? Yeah, I feel you on that. I, I just think as far as the customers are concerned, that is what they're coming in and asking. And, I, and they don't mean the plant terms, you know? They mean, how is this gonna make me feel? And I think as far as that goes, like the use of that language is good. Like why, I think I see people like, hey, we shouldn't call it this anymore. I'm just like, dude, it's fine. Like people know what they're asking for when they're asking for these things and they're not asking for a fucking plant type. So if they come in and say, hey, I want a, I want a sativa, they're not saying they want a plant that grows tall. They're saying they want a certain type of effect, which- Do you have anything with uh, tall, broad and skinny leaves? Yeah, it's like, no, that's not- How's the leaf structure on this plant? <laughs> yeah, no one asked that. They want to know what it's going to make them feel like, you know? And another thing just, and that's probably something you were going to ask me, but I don't necessarily believe in THC either. That shit mind fucks me all there. the time. I'll okay, get there. I'll let you get there. Uh, what do you like when you are? I know that you smoke for flavor mostly, right? I smoke for effect too, though. Like, okay, I so I, what I, kind of effects do you like? I like to. I like the once again gelinate effect. I'm real big on like that 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 uplifting kind of yeah. heady the heady high. You know, headband type shit. I like that. You know, the headband. Type. Yeah, exactly. I like that feeling. I'm 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 a big OG head like something about me like you know how we have i sometimes refer to it like as your inner smoker yeah uh, you know what i mean by that it's like sometimes you'll smoke something and then you'll just like it and you won't want to stop smoking it yeah and definitely. you might just catch yourself like i'll give you an example is like with an og batch i had like the sour fuel a couple batches ago i smoked a whole pee to the head and you know it was weird because uh, white ashes gave me some og too and i was smoking his i was smoking a sour fuel and it was like after a week i'm like wow I don't, all i want to smoke is og, OG right is now. all I but it, and it's like sure. and it wasn't you know it's not that's not a permanent thing i think we go through phases too but oh yeah i really like the effect of og I and mean, like my, my subconscious likes it you know what i'm saying they're like i, I like how it feels enough yeah. that I, I subconsciously go choosing that you know what i'm saying i think og just to kind of go back to the indica sativa hybrid talk i think if you were to really try and classify it, it would be a 60-40 sativa dominant hybrid. I agree. But I it, think it's we, its own Everybody thing. used to debate over back in the day if it was like, if it was indica or sativa, and I always felt like it was more sativa dominant. Yeah, but indica, then again, there was different phenotypes of OG. There was yeah, some that was, you know what I mean? It kind of makes you feel one way in my view. All the different phenotypes are really just one thing. They're, they're, every different SFV, fucking Tahoe, they're all pretty much the same thing. Have you noticed that nowadays, another thing, just mentioning the sativa and indica thing, I feel like back in those days, like in 2010, in those days when it was kind of, you know, more new and stuff yeah. that a lot of times people would think that, and I, I personally used to think this, and maybe I'm asking you also as a cultivator, but it's like they used to, a lot of times people would kind of associate the bud structure with yeah, being bud in. structure is definitely so like people, one of those if things. it was a hardball kind of structure, it was everything Indi was indica. indica. You know that's what I'm right. saying? And like I, that's GDP, GDP, that exactly, shit. exactly. So, so to me, like when I would see some of the batches of OG in my head, I was like, well, these are more sativa dominant because some of like even like the uh, you know like the lemon fuel, it's not overly 
no, it's dense. Not dense. It's no. not overly dense. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't know if that really even has anything characteristics, but that was something back in the day. And then everybody used to always kind of, you know, d debate over that shit. But but OG gives me the head high that I like. So I yeah, feel like that, that's me. like just tilted slight. Like I think Jelenade's slightly sativa. Yeah, it's, um, oh, I well. do too. Yeah. So it's those lemon terps, I think. It's limonene, it's beta caryophylline. It's those two main terps the terp that give you that combinations sativa give you profile. those Exactly. And that's like people think a lot of times, oh, it's THC or it's this, whatever. It could just be the terp combinations. Like we could just be speaking right now on the terp combinations that I like. You know I think I mean? we are, but you know, like there's the highs, highs, like, you know, there's strains that are fucking 30%. And I don't really feel like they give me the effect that I want. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I completely agree. But there's over, there's like f a little under 500 compounds that they've discovered in cannabis, and we test for like 40 of them. So like, I, even the terpene thing, the THC, the cannabinoids, we don't know. It's like if someone gave you a 500 piece puzzle and you had 100 pieces, like you would never know what the picture was. And I think that is kind of where we're at in the early, really early stages of uh, of understanding the plant. There's really not enough. There was a cool Huberman Labs podcast recently, and this, he put out kind of a weird, like, negative weed podcast, and this guy argued with him a ton on Twitter, and then he ended up bringing him in, and it goes in really interesting on the different compounds, and there's also some, uh, on online, there's Dr. Justice, um, she's this female uh, PhD cannabis researcher, and then uh, this girl, Riley that they do a lot of science with with cannabis it's pretty cool you should uh, i think it's riley kim and then dr justice grows on instagram they they put out a lot of cool stuff um i think what happened with the og too just to go back to that is that weed are uh fucking high times the what's it called i'm high uh weed <laughs> The high times cup, whatever. Yeah, that's what it's called. The cannabis yeah. cup is the what it's called. Cup. I'm sorry, <laughs> that's right. The cannabis cup, not the weed cup. Uh, they always classified OG as indica, which is like so wrong. But none of those people knew what the fuck they were talking about when they did it. So, um, cannabis has a medical side. You know, all cannabis use, in my view, is medical use. You, you know, you feel better. So no matter what, if you have a specific ailment or you don't, you feel better when you smoke it, and that is a medical thing. You know. Uh, do you use cannabis for any like specific medical reasons or are you just kind of a everyday reason guy? I mean, obviously I, I you know, if, if I have a certain things that I feel like it helps with, you know, like, you yeah. know, obviously, if, you know, I'm, I'm pretty athletic. So, you know, I feel like it helps with recovery. You know what I mean? Definitely. It, it helps with sleep. Like, you know, it can help you sleep, you know? So, I mean, there's certain things, pain. Sometimes I have stomach aches. I feel like it really works well with like with nausea and shit like that. But, you know, then also use it recreationally too, so. Yeah, it helps with my I, nausea for sure. Um, sleeping, I take a gummy every night and it just knocks me out. And then, uh, just general life shit, social anxiety, you know, anxiety. It can also make my anxiety a little worse. Sometimes I'll get high and start thinking crazy shit. That usually is like, if I'm stressed out about whatever I got a lot on my plate, I'm like, I start thinking, oh, I, you can't do this. You can't, fit. you know, there's too much going on. You start telling yourself kind of like negative lies and shit, I think. Um, what is a good way for bud tenders and customers to visually determine quality if they can't smoke it or they haven't smoked it? That's a tough question because, you know, a lot of the strains we, we work with are kind of ugly. But I, yeah. I mean, it is, it, you know, I, I feel like I can kind of tell, you know, to a certain extent, but it's like that's only half. That's not even half, you know. Yeah, but it's really like the only but way. I mean, okay, you want to look at like, you know, you want to obviously see if it has that ox. You don't want the oxidized that's look. Right. So that's right. So that's the first thing ones. I'm looking for is like oxidized look, which is one of the reasons that I'm, I've, I personally use the packaging I use is because I feel like it helps with that. But the bags um, or the jars? Uh, I'm back on I'm back on bags. That's all right, bro. I, I forget. I'm back on bags. But you know, at the same time, you know, I don't have the same technology in my jars that you had. You know how you have a little bit of a different lid. Yeah, we do. It's still I think bags keep the weed really fresh. I really it just, do. Crushes, it just crushes the bud it. for sure. Yeah. You know what I mean? It does. That is a fact. So you know, there's there's give or takes. I think the ultimate way to really consume cannabis is deli style into straight into your in a receptacle that you're going to take home and roll it up out of, you know what I'm saying? 
but it's yeah, like you know, I agree. RIP, I like RIP to those days. But there's still a bunch of like know, Michigan. They do that. Yeah, Michigan does deli style. They're actually going back to deli too. style. I think we're about to actually start doing more deli style stuff. Yeah, deli style is cool because you can get as much as you want to. I, I think I don't like buying eighths. I'd rather buy like a quarter or a half. You know, I think that seems to be moving in a direction like more people are buying bigger amounts to explain if, if you don't understand what deli style is it basically just means that they make it out to order yeah so it's in a big jar in the back like the good old olden days you know it's in a big they jar used to in the have back. it in you the sea you bring that out at, yeah in, uh, in sea bolts were sick with the chopsticks yep. yeah you could and, like pick your buds i'm like no nah, don't give me that one uh the, yeah that one's cool yeah all right, yeah, I'll take that. And you could see it and look at it. That was like such a big deal, being able to see and look at the bud that you want to buy. Like some stores would even let you pick out the nugs yourself. So that was cool. And uh, I think storing it, you know, this has to do with like the amount of oxygen in the in the jar so like it can dry out faster if it's just an eighth in a jar. Storing it homogeneously yeah, in a whole unit together keeps it way fresher. Yeah, I and agree. that's a fact. I've done like we can have batches that get packaged, and then the same batch is still in pound form, good, homogeneous, better. and it stays a lot fresher. Yeah. That's why deli style works better, honestly. I plus, agree. Plus, it can just be it can be monitored, but you know, whatever that doesn't it, that's neither here nor there. We don't have that option out here, so we have to try to. I just I uh, guess going back to what you should look for, make sure it's yeah. not turnt. You know that's a big deal, and you know look at the look at the tri the tri, tri kids, You know in my in my situation we use bags, so like you said, that can kind of affect that. Do you have a window? On the bottom gusset, yeah, yeah, yeah. on the bottom gusset. The window is important. The black jars, yes. people like have trust in Alien Lab, so it's a little different but they still want to see it. So it's like, I want to go to a jar that has a clear lid, but then you have to paint the glass and that can leave like weird residue on the bud. So I'm kind of in a weird situation, but I just wrote, well, I ghost, I had a ghost writer for an article about this. Um, so I have some good answers. I had to look up, you know, and figure out. Uh, one of the main ways that I said that you could determine quality is the uh, packaging date or the um, cultivation date. A lot of the times the cultivation nice. date is hidden in the UID. So it'll, if you look at that long number, um, you'll be able to see a date in there if they don't, because it, it, the regulations say you don't have to put the harvest date, but you do have to put the package date. So a lot of people have removed the harvest date so they can kind of trick you into not knowing uh, how old it is. But you could still see in that in that in that UID that's on the uh, the COA sticker, um, and I think freshness has a huge impact on quality. So you know if something sixty days from harvest, um, especially something sixty days from packaging, it could be fine. There's definitely still good weed out there that's that old, but for the most part, I'll just avoid it. Uh, the oxidization thing, if it's not vibrantly colored, you know, if it's not super green or super purple, the orange contrasting, if it looks like a little yellowing or oranging or, or uh, browning, that's not good. You don't want to get that. And then burnt tips. I see a lot of burnt tips in the rec market. Just the little leaves that the trimmers kind of kept on that are uh, burnt at the tips. I think those are all pretty signs of what not to get. You know, you want to avoid um all that stuff that was pretty good i think that covers most of what i had written and what i wanted you guys to know um so we'll go into the questions i got from the internet boof busters asks how do small batch brands that produce fire but don't have hype start to get out there I mean, I see it happen all the time. I, do I, I don't know. I don't. I, I'm not. As, I'm not in that position. But it's very, very doable because it, it's very like. It, I mean, I feel like they small batch people get more love than us. Yeah, they do. For you I know, mean, on a certain just level, like with certain people, they right. do. Yeah. Like I'll hear people say, like one time, you know, just like realistically, I don't want to throw anyone under the bus and say names, but like I was listening to somebody at a competition, and they, uh, you know. I'm not really a big fan of cannabis competitions. Yeah, I say that on record, way. but you know, I was at a competition listening to people talk and they were like, yeah, I'm surprised that such and such one, one, well, they weren't talking about any of us, but it was somebody that we know. And they were like, you know, I'm glad I'm surprised such and such one because there was a lot of small batch growers in there. And you know, like that's the, that's the perception. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, it's like, basically if it's like, you know, you versus some small batch guys, there's a community that's going to pick the small batch guys. So I guess to answer the question, I would say like, 
you know, obviously focus on your quality, you know, let your product speak for itself, man. You know, don't, you don't, we don't have to be, uh, you know, you don't have to do much, man. It's kind of like if the product's good, get it in the right hands. That's the right, that's, that's the thing, I guess. Yeah. Get it in the right hands, get it in the right retail locations. You know, if you have the, if you, you know, if you're small batch and you have the ability, obviously, to get into the right retail locations, you know, it's all about, it's all about what you, you know, the, 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 the formula comes down to obviously the, you, you want to sum up the formula. It's having a good, innovative product that, that considered to be, you know, superior to other products in the class, right? Yep. Marketed in a way that creates the right the right amount of awareness to where it all turns over to sales. And you know, in the meantime, it's like that that shit just takes time too. You know, yeah, giving it to the right people is it's all like things. distribution That's lanes. Even distribution bigger. lanes are your most important situations that's one of the reasons that i've always been successful even from the pop 215 days when i was selling friendly farms connected carts yeah and i was all the way from arcade to chula vista with it so it's just about putting it in the right people's hands so that you can get the right kind of coverage all across the market yeah putting it in the right people's hands is fucking paramount you give and it to the shop that's not going to appreciate it they're not going to tell people about it the same way that somebody like might that like knows oh shit this you know, homie, this is really putting a lot yeah. of love into this. This is a smaller batch. He's, this is more boutique quality. And they might like, you know, if you give that to the right person, they're going to, you know, put that up, put that same information in front of the consumer. Yeah, I think that in general, the small batch versus large batch thing is bullshit. Um, there's plenty of bad small batch out there and there's plenty of bad big batch out there. It is definitely comes down to the cultivator. I'll, I'll say straight up on record that the best weed I've ever smoked in my life came from like a 900 lighter. So yeah, I agree. You know, like I, I don't, I don't personally believe in small batch either. And people could say, you know, the other people are going to say we're biased because we put out a lot of, you yeah. know, especially you put a lot hell of weed, but, um, you know, that's, I'm trying to get where that's at. So it's like, you know, this is something that I believe good weed can be scaled. We've I seen can, it I done. Do too. I mean, I've, a alien labs connected some sells millions of dollars of fire weed every every month and there's yeah. nothing small batch about that but it's like if the weed is on the level of what we like to consume and you know a lot of times some of these facilities have resources to really do things maybe better like I, when i used to run a spot i only ran little 12 lighters with my homies but we were super small batch yeah and we didn't have the resources so i mean we were like drying in a bedroom we didn't exactly. have you, you know, dry in the same have, room you grow in we didn't have resources to really do things the way things need to be done in a facility that's a state-of-the-art facility so you know like I, I the, the homie that asked this obviously was a small batch homie, yeah, so I don't sure. want to get on here and start. No, it's them fine. Up. It's not. I, yeah. I, I fuck with the small batch growers, and I deal with a lot of them, and I, I think that they, you know, that there's a lane for for that. You know, people yeah. appreciate that. People appreciate that they in love, every industry. The love, you know, just got to make it sure that it lives up. This, I guess, what it comes down to is this. It, does it live is it truly small batch first of all because a lot of this shit on the instagram i've literally seen shit that says small batch but they do a 200 pound drop yeah so it's like that was it's not marketing to, yeah so that if it's not a marketing gimmick if it's a true small batch that's you know we and then does it live up to that you know because if you're going to use the small batch here's here's my answer if you're going to use the small batch differentiation to market the product then the product better be once again better be superior or yeah. at least be on a level to where people appreciate that it's a small batch if you're if you don't understand product good enough and you're just somebody who's overly proud about your product which is something i see a lot of times it happens all then the time. you might be biased and maybe your small batch isn't what people feel like is a high quality product. Yeah, so I mean, you know what I mean? You can't you can't cry wolf out here. You know, if you once you roll out the right thing, small batch guys gotta do it right just like we do, you know. Yeah, no one loves small batch more best, than small best, batch. Best growers. batches ever. Hold batches back and don't brand them until you're until yeah. they're good. Shit like that, you know? Yeah, I think that uh the thing with the the main differentiator between small batch and large batch is that there's just more batches. So like we have three growing facilities in uh California, you know well over 2,500 lights. We have hundreds of batches. Small batch growers will have five batches a year. So like you guys are just seeing way more batches and everything in this industry is batch to batch. You don't, not, no grower nails it every time. And so when you see hundreds of batches versus five batches, it's easier to make those five batches look good because there's only five of them. Like, you know, you and can you nail know, five batches. We nail five batches a week. 
you know Facts. so and it's like that's another thing is like you have to take in consideration like when rusty duke of verb my homie used yeah. to run he used to run a small batch warehouse here in rancho back in the Pratt, prop 215 days 40 lights one room okay but my other homies have a 680 light facility right now where i get where high tech where i get a lot of my weed and they have 40 light rooms individual batch tanks 680 lights what's the difference if it's in a 40 light room you know these 40 light rooms are designed for you know to be optimal so it's like a lot of times when we talk about a small batch it's like a lot of times this really comes down to the things that people do that add that that's touch. right you understand what i'm saying so it can be done this this shit and, and another thing to also mention that a lot of these homies that are running the big spots like 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 88th street and these big spots they all started as as small batch small dudes batch. and they leveled up so if you're out here and, and, and you, you see that, then it's good to, you know, to acknowledge like, okay, damn, they leveled up, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Cause that's, that's a level up. That's not, yeah, it's I think not that's a, it's, viewed you know, that's negatively, and it shouldn't be viewed not. negatively. Cause these, yeah, these were homies that used to be on a small batch level. You know what I'm saying? It's like you, I remember when I met you, you had 60 lights yep, that's or right, something like that, you know, 60, 80, really lights, 60 lights, some shit like that. And it, it's like, look at, look at it now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, look at it now. So um, I for, I had a whole nother page, so I'm going to go back to these. These are good. What do you think about the article and the subsequent testing by Catalyst regarding pesticides and rec cannabis and brands using them? Honestly, I was I was in Europe and I kind of missed yeah. a lot of that. But I, I think that, you know, I do, you know, shout out to Elliot for like cross checking. the. Yeah. To, I like that he's checking the industry and making sure that, you know, things are compliant and safe that he's selling in his stores. You know, God forbid you don't want to sell something that's like not safe to people. So yep. it's like he's doing his due diligence on his end. So I respect that. Yeah, it was tough. I mean, for it's, me to it's kind of hard to see some of you, these names on there of people you know, but then it's like know, sometimes shit's getting retested and it's good. So it's like you know, I don't, I don't really. I would say you know, as a consumer, just all we can do is educate ourselves as as store owners that we should be taking the, the steps that you know what I mean, like that yeah. kid, that was his, that Elliot's taking, and you know, I mean, besides Backpack Boy, a, a lot, a few brands that were my friends are on that list, and really besides Backpack Boys, I think most of that shit was boof anyway, so. Uh, what is your favorite method of consumption? I mean, I just keep lighting up joints, man. That's all. I, that's really. Yeah. I mean, I do dabs because we have a rosin line now. I don't personally like to smoke hash holes like that. I'll smoke them. I have one right here. They give me two. Shout high. out to my boy Juan Tostado, but I'm gonna light that up in a minute. But uh, um, yeah, I'll smoke a hash hole. But they just, you know, really, they give me kind of like this. Goes, they're too. They're too indica for me, man. Yeah, they, give they get me you too, super high. Yeah, back to what you were saying. But yeah, no, they're too. They're too. I don't mean that for real. But that's how you know that that, that feeling, that lethargic feeling. I can't do that shit all day. That's too hard. I love to get high, but I'm naturally introverted, and it really tends to just exacerbate. <laughs> smoke my a hash hole right now. You're not going to get much out of me. So yeah, that's why I don't. I don't usually smoke when I do pods or something like this because I just get quiet. I get my vocabulary goes to like ten words and three of them are fucking shit and piss um, but so, i appreciate low temperature dabs for sure you know yeah so low like, temperature dabs dab and joints are my favorite ways i guess i consider sacramento the real epicenter of quality and innovation in um cannabis what do you think about that and why do you think that is I agree that that is the facts. I think that a lot of what used to the innovation spirit that used to be active in the Bay Area, kind of in the in the yeah. era that I would consider to be like it might have been the last era. Now we might be in the new era. I Honestly, I, I realize I we might be. I used to say it was the the foundation of this era, but I think we're actually in a new era now. Technically, if we're talking history, but the the, the a lot of the innovation spirit that happened in the Bay Area, I feel like honestly was run out just because of the. You know the tech culture running up the yeah. the, in, the, the and, and then you know the same thing with covid so you know a lot of times i think those you know a lot of the operators that were out there in the bay or are came to sac sac was a place that was uh was also very um like progressive on the walls like yeah, you know we we, we, we we were able to like you know people lobbied to get the delivery service that was all done in sac when the first regs came out there was no delivery licenses you remember that was i went to the th shit downtown whenever they passed like okay yeah, we're gonna right. add the the delivery you know and that was darren and them that like were lobbying this yeah. you know so it's like it's always been the spearhead of the movement. I think there's just so many cultivators here. It's it's kind of a, you know what else it is too, is it's, it's kind of a hub. It's like, you know, from the, the growers up in NorCal to, yeah. to, the, to the people that 
are out here trying to experience the Cali weed scene and you know what I mean? It yeah, all in other words, I would say it's just like the community that surrounds it here. We all share tech. We all are friends. We talk. We compete with each other in a, in a positive way. Um, you know, we push each other to do better. We all have good palates. We all talk to each other like, hey, that shit wasn't that good. And we're all open to um, shit not being good. I, I think growers in general have a tough time accepting if something isn't good i love to hear i, I love that part though that's what he, you're right about yeah right. yeah like because they just grew it you know they they babied it they fucking you know they love it and that's fine it's, it's true the work you did was good uh but sometimes the the flower isn't and, and i think really all of us that you know are friends and we talk and we go to dinners together and shit we're really upfront with each other we don't really hide um if we have a bad batch, we're like, nah, that shit wasn't smoking. We don't share it or, or, or we do. And we get the kind of feedback that you don't want to hear, but you need to hear if you want to be better. Uh, so I think really the community of, of growers and, and the culture in Sacramento cannabis is so much different than anywhere else. Especially in my position, because a lot of these guys cultivate for me, for my brand. Right. You know, because of my structure, I have, you know, I have uh, cultivation contracts. I give these guys my genetics, you know, just to yeah. be transparent. So it's a lot of times I'm getting batches brought to me that I really have to critique and these guys are my friends. You know what I mean? That's so tough, it's like, but... I will say that people in SAC are like, anytime I've dealt with you or even like dog or anything, it's like, if I'm like, hey, I'm not really sure I like this batch, you know, it's very well received. If, if not already brought to my attention before I even go yeah, to, I think you know, these really guys up here are so good, good on QC that they'll be like, hey, I don't know if you're going to want to, you know, run this yep. batch and it's, 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 it's fire, but it's like, you know, it's, a, and a lot of times uh, they're still, they're still the ones. So it's like, it's good to have homies that are really on that and don't have their emotions attached it's to the it. It's, ego. I think a lot yeah, of people in Sacramento thing. don't really have that ego that's associated with this shit. I met all the growers, you know, all the brand guys, and there's definitely some that think they're, uh, that wouldn't be out here with you guys is actually how i would put it you know they don't take part in the culture they don't really care they're just kind of here to get money and i think all of us in sac you know we want to make money of course we wouldn't be no no one would be doing this if not for that but um we also care about it's the a lot product of passion and we don't here. have yeah the, the passion. passion right exactly well said uh what are some differences in customer behavior in the traditional market versus the rec market well, I wouldn't know because I don't participate in the traditional market, Ted. But if I, if, if from well, you from, still know about from, it. So maybe you don't participate. Just from what I hear, you just from what you I still hear, still know about it. Um, so you know, the the traditional market right now is is kind of a slave to the candy candy yeah, terps. Definitely. You know what I mean? So a lot of these guys out here um, are kind of stuck in a box. It, they're kind of forced. If you if you own a facility, the the production, the production costs you know are higher than ever. The 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 the, the literal wholesale cost is literally lower than lower it's ever than been ever. and if you're growing strains that are more innovative if you're not somebody like me that has a brand that has built this lane to sell innovative weed you might be getting stuck with what i consider to be like fire packs you know what i'm saying so yeah. it's like i see that shit a lot out here so it's like people in in return that makes people just grow you know the candy varieties so that they have the insurance policy to be able to sell all their stuff and i think that that's heavily influenced by the traditional market yeah i agree it's interesting how like you know if you take part in that kind of mylar bag lemon cherry gelato um trend you have to stay with those trends you have to always be participating in the in those latest trends or alternatively you could do like what alien labs does and connected and i you swear do. you guys are a standard bro like if we didn't have people like alien labs connected as a standard in this in this thing then it would be like you know it's, it would be yeah it, it's just yeah, if you stay in your own lane the whole time you can do that you don't have to but if you trend surf and they i've seen so many brands come and go that are like oh yeah we just sell fucking 30 different varieties of lemon cherry or whatever it may be at the time and then, you know, when that's dead, which it will die, all these trends die, they have struggled to figure out what to do next. And I think we're seeing that play out with the spray packs. Like it was the lemon cherry and now it's the flavored shit. And like, if you were just a lemon cherry boy, you kind of probably have to do spray shit now to, to, to sell your shit. Or get innovative and step it up. You know, some of these guys are, are, are coming, coming hard with it, but you know, yeah, it's a hard game right yeah, now. Yeah, it too. is. It's, it's tough game. out there right now. All right, we'll go back to the internet questions. Uh, let's see. 
I like your Alien Labs cue cards. Those are those are lit. <laughs> Shout out to Stacy for that. I take pictures of everything uh, you do and send it to my designer all the time. No, I already no. have like. <laughs> you are not the only one. Uh, what are your top three? Str- oh, we already. I asked that. You said it. Gelato Forty One, Gelinade, and Surebanger Twenty Two. Surebanger Twenty Two. These it. are just saying things that aren't affiliated with me, just so I'm not being, you know, biased. Obviously, I like my own. I like a lot of the stuff we're working on too. But no, be biased if you want. Okay, if you so really I really think like that's the peach your top tree. Three, the pe- this peach tree I'm smoking right that now. That smelled really good. It's, it's amazing it, to me. Um, you know, the uh, a couple pheno hunts that we have that we're like still selecting the keeper, but like the green, the green line, the the uh, green highlighter, which is the lime sickle perm. Oh, that's, that's fire. Um, you know, we got we, I got some shit in the works, man. Yeah, I got you some got zope, cool. I got some zope sour DBX ones right now. Oh, wow. That it, we have a pheno of that's really dope. Apple fritter, blueberry mimosa. Oh, yeah, I've had that, right? That's Tongue the twister. party poppers? Nah, or? so that's the Runt's Blueberry Mimosa. Oh, is party okay. pop- and so I have another Fino of that as well. So the original party popper. Yeah, anyway, yeah. I can go too deep. But yeah, those. I like my shit too. But when people ask me that question, just so I'm not like a... I'm out the here, same way. You know what I'm saying? I try to be open-minded. And as far as like other than what, I, what I'm working on, what I smoke most of is kind of like... Those yeah, I, and I a lot of the like fire farmers say all oh, my shit because that's fake. But Facts. fire farmer, is, he has some cool shit. I like that uh, fun dip. And we're about to drop Zangria, I think, in August. It's pretty good. Um, yeah. A uh, little bit dazed as how does the culture view big business coming to buy brands like Alien Labs and Doja? Well, I mean, I don't think that big culture would bought you, you not guys. yet you but, know, they, but what that the question know. is well no big brand no no I mean, so as long as as long as i'm alive no no big company is going to buy us unless it's already internationally legal and to the point of like okay this is going to help me with my logistics and yeah in that point i would still stay in control i'm building this you know i don't build cars and sell cars i build cars and race cars you know what i'm saying yeah no i get it totally i like that i think that in general just the question was kind of more like how does the when if and when that does happen? How do you think the culture would react? And in my I mean, view, they're going to hate on it. Of course, they're going to hate on you it. You can yeah. make if you make the biggest moves you've ever made in your career, somebody's going to say that something negative. You know what I'm saying? And then it's going to spiral out into some crazy shit on the internet. So you shouldn't even take that shit too seriously. Just you know? don't read comments. That's what I have to do. Uh, because yeah, they just it's not. There's like a couple different things. There's a couple different reasons I think that. And one is just like there's a lot of people out there with opinions that don't really have uh, a place and they kind of feel left out by what happened and, and those guys really hate when this happens because they're like damn they fucking did it you know I hate those guys they did it and that is real as fuck like I see people still to this day that like damn you're really just mad that we did it and you didn't and like that's so such a con I used to think that was so dumb when people say oh yeah you know er- the bigger you get the more haters you get but it is very true like people don't care it's not it has nothing to do with the brand it has nothing to do with you it's just the fact that you did something that they didn't and people want to do this don't be confused every person if you have a fucking instagram weed page you want to do what we're doing and that can make you mad um all right i got two more on here and then uh I'm, we'll open it up for questions um when Watanaz, our, our German brother. You know who that is? Remember he was at the... What's his name? Watanaz. He yes. was at the Doja uh, our, Spain uh, thing. Movie. He's cool. When, when is the... Um, I'm going to save that for last. Sorry. <laughs> this one's just for... How you uh, say this is a good. This man. is a good one. That's why, but I need to send it off with it. Uh, <laughs> this one is just for Alien. Ask, why not collab with 710 Lab instead of Kalia? Um I love Kalia and I, when we chose them as a collab partner, they were very, no, they were very unknown. And I like to use our platform to shine a light on people that don't have it that I think are doing really good. I love 710 Labs. I think their brand is one of the better ones in cannabis. Uh, I think their quality is pretty fucking good for how scaled up they are. And their brand is sick. They do sick shit all the time. I'm working, but we're working right now with 710 Labs. We're going to drop a collab with them uh, at PuffCon. And it's rosin too, but we're also doing a apparel line. And like when I got with Skelly, who's like their creative director and their co-founder, he blew my mind. I was like, hey, what do you want to do with this? And he sent me like 50 pictures, hella paragraphs of shit. And I've worked with a ton of people, you know, 
you know, the team of, of Curtis and I and, and Sean and Dan, we worked with a bunch of people doing collapse and like nobody has come this hard on ideation. So I was like, I get it. You know, this guy, he, he knows what he's doing. And I think 710 Love's brand is, is super sick, but I just love the guys at Calia and I wanted to shine a light on them. And then it just turned out they, when they scaled up, they did it really well and they have super good quality and some of the best quality in the rec market in my view. Um, and then I'll send us off with this. The Doja Alien Labs collab. When when is that come out? Do you know? Did I tell you? I'm going to have to uh, ask a few people, but I know <laughs> it's that November. So okay, we so are doing a collab. Uh, we we uh, it's a clothing capsule and we worked closely on it. You know, it, we did a lot of work in, in their style uh, with our designers. Doja worked closely with us on it. Um, ideation wise and it's sick it's one of our best capsules that we've done so that comes out in november i love it it's great uh super sick we have tons of shit the biggest one we've done too so there's backpacks there's rugs there's scales there's everything all super tons of shit very sick uh, my team really knocked it out of the park with uh doja's guidance and my guidance and and they did a great job so that's going to be fun we're going to do it on the rooftop at the what's it called at the Montauban. Montauban. What was it before though? I thought that history the Lion was Street sick. Theater. That's CBS. Cool. CBS Live. So we'll do one in we'll LA. Do it on the rooftop well, I mean, we'll CBS do one in Live. Sacramento as well. We'll drop it here as we must. We'll do it here first, but then Sac we're all first. Yeah, Sac first, yeah, Sac first I agree. Sac first. All right. So uh, thank you guys. That was fun. Um, yeah. I give, thank you. And then we'll open it up thank for you, questions you. from you guys. Any questions? Oh, it's bullshit. What's up? Oh, all right, here. We can share this one, Ted. How you doing, goats? Oh, shit. What's your name, man? Aaron from Pack Bros. Thank you. Good to meet you, bro. I've met you, I think. Before. Yeah, a hundred times. So, so look, this is a business question. I figured this was more for like bud tender education. Nah, business is fine. These guys are all interested in the business. So what do you think a brand's purpose should be right now when we're so close to deregulation? Should they work on expanding their MSO? Uh, I think that, I didn't know if that was a two-parter. Hold on, I'll give you. It really I, is. I think that they should be cleaning up their act if they're not super fucking over regulating themselves if they're not super sticking above the above board with everything they do they got to do that first off no one's going to care you're not going to be able to make it if federal legalization happens if you're selling you know 75 percent of your bags fucking out the back door no one's going to care you're not going to do it if you can't show real revenue no one's going to care you're not going to make it to the next step um and then i think you know, the next thing you should be doing is really just cultivating your community. Uh, I think it's a Grateful Dead quote. My friend Sean told it to me. But if you have basically 50 real customers, that's really all you need. Uh, you know, those people will turn from 50 to, to uh, 150, from 150 to 400, and so on and so forth. And then, you know, once you're at like a thousand customers that buy your shit daily and, and weekly and monthly and that need your shit, uh, you're good. You're set. So that's really, I think, just focus on cultivating your community and, um, you know, your fan base, for lack of a better term. I don't like to call it that, but yeah. Uh, and and that's really two key things I think you can do to um, to have longevity in this business. And then I'm sure Ryan has a good answer for this. That was pretty well said. I mean, I think building awareness is important. I've spent a lot of time building awareness, but I think what he said too is getting operational is very important because no one really wants to just scale an idea. So, you know, it's it's important to get your shit together and get operational, get your books right, like he said, scale up, get it, get, get to where you know, like if you if you want to come into it's the same it's, it's, it's the same thing that we did before. You know, you just got to build some momentum, build momentum. Right on, man. Thank you for the question. My boy back here. Uh, my question is, do you think we lost a lot of like the old strains because of genetic deviation or because of like new tech and methodologies more so? Uh, I think it's a little bit of both. There is a thing that I think the idea that like at first I wasn't sold on the idea that 
strains changed over time because we had the 11 fuel cut that was, you know, we got it in 2006 and it was still rocking, you know, 10 years later. But what I learned after I learned more about this, you know, we have real plant scientists on our team. Um, and I ask them questions all the fucking time about this stuff. And what they say is that there's a thing called epigenetic drift, which means that, uh, you know, in your DNA, there's certain, like, let's say lines of code that can be switched off uh, and, or on, you know, mutations that just happen over time with, with the way we, you know, propagate and we tissue culture. And so certain things that made something good could over time can be switched off and that thing will not be good anymore. But there's also the aspect of that, which is, you know, we over light our rooms. We, the, the new tech, we're not growing with, you know, single ended air cooled HPSs with, you know, 400 PPFD, which if you don't know what PPFD is, it's a measure of light that reaches the canopy. It's, um, it's also, it's recorded in micro moles. So for, you know, you'd be at 300, 400 in a trap row. And now the, these big commercial facilities are like in the thousands, 1500s. And they just don't like that. They were never born. They weren't born like that. They weren't selected like that. So they've changed over time because our, the way we grow has changed over time. Like I think OG is a really good one. There's a couple OGs out right now that are really good. Shout out to White Ashes. He's got the um, make OG great again. And then I think uh, Unruly from Blem is actually pretty good too. Uh, and and they grow the newer way, but it's still different. They they really baby it. They do lower light, and they've figured out how to how to kind of bring that forward. So um, I think it's a little bit of both. Just to answer anyone. Oh, two up here. No. All right. Um, I, I know that there was like a kind of like a secret explosion in the weed market during like the pandemic and stuff. Yeah. And I thought it would be cool to get like what it was like from your guys' perspectives You're running sick as fuck. big, uh, big weed companies. <laughs> no, it was really cool because we could just grow everything and sell everything. We bought multiple facilities in the pandemic because we we're like, we just don't have enough weed. And now we're like, oh, we got a little too much weed. But um, it was cool, man. Just that was still early on when uh you know yeah it was still early on but we were it was good you know it was great for great for all the growers great for the middlemen great for brands everyone was just they all had money fucking you know they did the uh 1200 bucks or whatever i think i don't know i didn't get it but i wish i did um so yeah, people had money to buy. They were chilling at home, smoking weed, and and it was crazy. And but I think a lot of companies overestimated how long that was going to last. I know we did, and they now that's kind of led to the glut that we have, where the prices are super low because you know everyone stepped up, built new facilities, and now it's like shit. We have way too much weed, but it was sick though. With COVID, I can't. Those are hasn't been seven years yet. Um, so, you know, COVID, we went from being like, it was crazy, man. It was, that was, it, I'll remember that probably is the craziest time for the rest of my life. I mean, it went from being like where it was the driest that I've ever seen it pretty much in my career to being like that the demand just went crazy. Like even like Cookies Melrose, just in, it, just cause you guys, we have a lot of bud tenders in here. Cookies Melrose did days where they were like hitting like 400 K during i mean there the lines were constant everything was crazy during that era everybody was doing a lot of numbers i mean it was it, that took us from being like kind of a smaller you know a smaller f f startup to actually getting you know resources to be able to get the you know distro and get into the rec market and do our thing so it was a big deal i hope everybody did the right the right thing with it you know a lot of people you know sp spent them spent the money they made wisely like you said and, and were able to expand and some didn't but it, it was a good time to definitely make moves because it was you know. i saw a lot of people buy uruses that i don't see anymore anymore right here stace you uh both of you so plans or I guess like 
options for going international? Is that on anyone's radar? Is that like what you're thinking about? Uh, it's not really on ours. We, it's kind of a, you know, we're pretty well situated to do that. Like we know how to operate in uh, GMP facilities. We, you know, we do this, we're pretty set up to do it, but I just think that there's so much opportunity here in the United States still that like you, it would kind of be foolish to just chase that, uh, in a way other than a licensing deal, which we don't do. So we don't do licensing deals. We like part of the magic of us is that we grow our own and, you know, we're pretty good at scaling up the other states that you, if you guys ever go to Arizona, like buy an eighth Arizona weed, it is fucking fire. I asked my boy, Stevie, he went to Arizona. He hit me up. He's like, what's up with this shit? Everyone that's gone to Arizona is like, what the fuck? Because it's crazy that, you know, they, we really put in play. We took one of the growers from a triple C in Oakland, which is like a legendary facility of ours and sent him out there to run that facility. And then we hired out just people that really care about it. And I think at the end of the day, it just goes back to the cultivation thing. Like these people care. If you, if you're cultivators that care about this shit, you're going to be able to produce good, good weed in, in a cool facility. So that's, I think that for us, we're just focusing on new states and really maximizing the states that we're in. Yeah, yeah there's some, my, my Arizona weed's good too, man. Come on, dog, come on. Give me a chance. I got some in my bag, actually. Whoever said that, come see me. Come see me in a minute. I got some in the bag to show you. Um, hey, the real shit though. Like, so I, I'm not an owner operator in the same way as you, as, as Connected is. And, you know, they, I, as, as, the, as you said, just to answer what he said too, is it, when it goes to be where we can do this kind of exportation, this GMP international exportation from California, places like those facilities would be the first ones that would be eligible to do that. And when they came, if they did come online and make that decision to do that, those facilities would dominate the market with a higher uh, price point based on a designated origin. You know, because that, that designated origin would be from California would now be higher than anywhere else if you're exporting from say Colombia or Australia where you were at. So, but to answer your question about uh, international export, I actually have um, operators, for, I, can, I had to think about it if I can say all this, but I'm pretty sure I can say all this, but we have operators um, from, you know, my boys from Thailand, from Bangkok that are actually in LA picking up cuts. I'm giving them the giraffe, the perm, um, the kamikaze, uh, the runs blueberry mimosa, the other pheno, which I'm calling papaya mosa, I'm giving him. So I'm, 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 he already has a few of the other ones. Uh, I'm getting to see, uh, you know, this will be, the, when I go out there next time, it'll be the second time I've seen their facility, walk the facility. It's one of my friends that me and, actually me and Ted know the guy that oversees and kind of runs the genetic flow and the, uh, you know, the, 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 the sales and exportation. So I'm gonna, I'm going to have EU capable export product soon that that will be exports to, to you know, Switzerland and Germany and all, Australia and Portugal, Colombia, England. England medical is a big one for us. We're going to hit England medical pretty hard. And also, you know, with that, and that, that'll be all just to clarify grown in Thailand and Bangkok. But the facilities, as you've seen, you know, the, the, the you know, production worldwide, you know, obviously we, we, we prefer the designated origins of California, but as of right now, it's, we have to, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that facility he's talking about does grow fire. They, they know what the fuck they're talking about. So, like I said, there, we just don't for our reasons, but like if there was an opportunity, I don't think we would turn it down. It's just, we, it would have to be heavily vetted. You know? um, all right. Is there anyone else? One right here. Two, all right. Two more and we're done. So I actually used to work for 710 Labs. Nice. Um, so I actually have one question. Will we ever see Alien Labs living soil? Uh, that's funny. I had a question on here about living soil, and I'm going to actually ask you it. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're talking about it. We're going to do it. It's not, it's easier. I mean, just to put it bluntly, like it's easier than what we do. Um, and I, I don't necessarily know that it's better, but these experiments will tell us if it is or not. So I want to ask you that before I get to this guy. Do you think that living soil organic actually tastes better than the best synthetic weed? I've never, I'm yet to do side-by-sides with guys like you that I know how they're synthetic. You know what I mean? 
but if it's, I think that you're the one that's going to answer those questions for me. I mean, as of right now, I've only had a few times in my life, shout out to like Duke of Herb, that anybody that's, I've never been super impressed with what people were marketing to be living soil. There's been a few times, you know, like probably a handful of times that I was actually thoroughly impressed. You know, hopefully, you know, if you prove concept on that, I'd love to see the side by sides. I think brands like that that are willing to do it. That's why I said earlier that you guys are a standard because, you know, that's more resources that people are with in my level and my brand have is to be, I don't have the resources to do that. So I'm going to basically be piggybacking my research off of what you're doing right now. And then five years from now, I'm going to be like, Oh yeah, of course yeah, it is easier. You know, all you have to do is amend the soil and you know, you know, so it's like, I'm watching you right now. So I'll let you hit. That's a long way to say no. Uh, <laughs> synthetic weed is better. I'm sorry. It is true right now. Maybe, maybe there'll be growers that crack the code, but, Overall, the best batches of synthetic weed are better than the best batches of organic living soil on that. I think most of the experts that really know what they're talking about would agree with that. All right, uh, my boy right here. Are there any new strains coming out or genetics that you guys are hunting? Yeah, man, it, we, we are always hunting. We do you know, a few thousand plant positions um, a year. And I have had a tough time lately, like selecting things, but because I like we have dark webs, really good, probably one of the better things we put out. Um, and like when I saw the response to that in both both sides of the market, like my friends that fucking don't go to the dispensaries and shit, were going into the dispensaries to buy that. I was just like, all right, I got to be a little more strict on how I select things. It, it all it kind of has to hit that bar. So this year, all we're gonna have come out is Zangria. Um, but then in October, I think, we have the, a battle box that is um, RS11 Skittles. There was like four Finos that really stood out to me. That, um, I already chose my favorite, but like I like to validate my findings with this. So there'll be a battle box that comes out, four different Finos, you guys will vote. And whichever one wins will be the one that comes out. I hope the one I like wins, and I think it will, but uh, we'll see. And um, then, we have a ton of shit. I got a cool OG coming, connected as a really cool OG coming, cool ghost OG. Uh, I just, we found a bad apple Skittles for connected that was like super good. I was, I was annoyed that um, I, I was annoyed that I didn't, wasn't like, nah, I'm taking that, you know, but connected, you know, we, I like to help. I select a lot of that shit too. So when I find a sick Pino, I'm like, this has to go to you guys. Like, this is gonna, this is gonna be a game changer. What about you? I like, um, I, I've been kind of working on more of the fruitier types. Like yeah. But exotic new school fruit. So like the apple fritter, blueberry mimosa. By That's Duke, gonna be by good. Duke of Herb. That one's really crazy. I, I like the uh, orange Z, which is a, I like it's that a, too. It's a mosa. It's an orange. It's a Skittles pollinated by mimosa. And it's also it's candy orange, so it's not like tangy orange. It's candy orange. You yeah, know? I really like that. Um, I, I, I like the. I had uh, it from you. There's there's a great mochi that we're rerunning right now that's got like the grapey turp like the GD you know but it's oh like yeah nice the GDP turp more or less but it's like something so I'm trying to find more fruity shit I'm trying to run more thin you know cookies I got Freddie you know my boy just told me today Freddie Biggs told me he got the thin mint and the blue blue cookies back in uh, oh nice that's a good back in rotation so you know I, I I don't know man you know I'm always pheno hunting and trying to keep shit from the from the previous uh, yeah for solution. sure i like that mix i think Conne uh, connected tries to do that too where they like take some old school shit and make, there's some new sativas that have come out that are really good the jack crosses and the f gooey pack i'm gonna feel like that we gooey just pack. got that uh yeah if you bring me the giraffe i don't like calling it by its form giraffe gooey <laughs> yeah giraffe gooey i love the giraffe gooey. so we'll do the giraffe gooey that's gonna sure. be the first alien labs flower the, yeah flower that'll be sick thing. giraffe gooey great name um, all right. Well, thank you guys. Let's uh, everyone stand up. Let's take a pick. Okay. All right. Video first, but let's go. This is a great crowd. Thank you guys so much. And then one photo. Let's see if we can do the point five and the zero one. Oh yeah. All right. Put your hands up. Let's go.
All right, thank you guys. Everyone, okay, go outside to the joint, grab food, get a drink. We're gonna swap out the furniture in here and you guys can come back later.